this tutorial I am going to go over installing the gateway. So there's two ways that you can install the gateway. One manually in which there's some information you will need and the other is by emailing a link with a configuration code attached to it. The benefit of emailing it through KFS is because you're logged into KFS uh, it already knows your credentials. Uh, you tell it what group you want to install the gateway in, so it automatically knows the access code uh, as well as the uh, registration URL. Uh, if you manually enter it in or install it, you have to enter all of that information in yourself. So where you would find that is each group has this I with a circle around it off to the right. Click on it. And here is the access code for the group and the registration URL. You will need those along with your KFS credentials. Emailing it, all of that information is embedded into the configuration key. So to get the gateway, we will come in here to the product downloads. And we're not doing this one anymore. So download the net gateway. Uh, save it wherever you want. I already have it, so I am not going to download it again. And then we need to come back in here. Uh, the rest of the installation for the manual um, installation, I will go over a little bit later because there's some, uh, once you start the the installation um, wizard it'll uh, there there's some areas where you can either do it automatically or manually so I'll cover the manual a little bit later let's go in here to gateway more and send gateway installer now again we are doing the net gateway uh, please work with me I cannot talk and type at the same time Okay, this could either be if you want to email it to yourself if you are going to install it or if you want to go ahead and email it to the customer and let them install it. We will leave that on create new. Here's where you would select the group that you want to install the gateway to. So I am going to be using this one uh, out for in the field on location. You would uh, select the appropriate group under sales groups and territories and then find the customer under that. So I will select that. By default it's set to monitor. In the installation process we can change it to manage which we will be doing. And then this is for automatically um, setting up search criteria. By default it'll search over the local network. You can edit that by coming in here. There are three different discovery methods that you can implement. One is the default, which is by local network. You can do it by IP or host name. So you just select the appropriate one from the drop down and then put either the IP address or the host name in here. Hit the plus. You can do multiple ones. I would not uh, uh, click or uh, check this because in order for it to find USB devices, there has to be a local agent inv uh, installed. So I will also be going over that later. I would leave this checked. And there are other ways of doing the discovery, the same three methods um, that we'll be going over later where this is not automatically checked, but here emailing uh, the link it is. So we will just simp oh, I didn't go over the other. Uh, the other is by IP range. Now this would be good uh, for a customer that has multiple locations. Uh, it could be either like just a regular uh, private company. Uh, they you know have locations you know in other states or whatever. Each one of them is going to have their own subnet. Schools is another example. Each school has its own subnet. Uh, so. You could have one that was like a 192.168.0. whatever, a 192.168.1. whatever. So for the uh, 
for the searches, you can do 192.168.0.1 through 192.168.0.254. Hit the plus, 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.1, .1 hit the plus. You can have up to 10 subnets per discovery setting and you can have 10 discovery settings per gateway. So in theory you could have uh, have it searching for a hundred different networks. Uh, we are going to cancel that since we already have this one set and we will send. Now this should just take a minute and we should see it here and here it is so there's a couple things that you need to know here's the configuration key that i was talking about now everything uh, your kfs credentials the url uh, and the access code are all embedded into this configuration key so you either want to write it down or i will copy it the other thing to make note of is that both the configuration key and the link are good for one week now, after a week, it just becomes invalid and um, can't be used. So if you don't do it within a week, you just um, email another one. So uh, click on the uh, link here. Now, you'll notice here it, it's emailing it. It's you're downloading the file it, itself, going into the product downloads and downloading it to manually install it's zipped so you have to extract it before running it and again i do already have it so i am not going to do that so what we will do is we will come over here so i will come in here to my downloads kfs and right here tell it yes okay next these two ports will automatically be opened up on the computer that the gateway is being installed on. Now, if you install the gateway, it successfully installs, it finds devices, but it is not able to register the devices. It fails when, when you try to register them. It's possible that they may have a firewall, either server, router, uh, or a hardware firewall that these ports would need to be opened up on as well. I wouldn't worry about that unless it fails to register the devices. So we will just simply tell it to install. And along with that, okay, you, uh, you shouldn't get this. I'm getting this message because I previously installed it and then deleted it, and I didn't delete the databases. So I will just tell it no. Uh, along with those ports, there is also a white paper that uh, has some additional information in it. I would suggest you go over that white paper, read through it. There's both a customer one that we can send to the customer as well as a dealer white paper that uh, goes over additional information that's not in the customer white paper. But you will inevitably get questions if you're dealing with IT. So it'd be good to go through that white paper so you know what's in it, uh, what security measures are being used and whatnot. So we will tell it finish. And this does not always pop up right away. Sometimes you'll get a message uh, to um, that it failed to, to load and it'll give you a reload button. That's actually normal because it takes, um, you know, takes a little bit uh, for it to register on KFS. So we will tell it to accept, leave the direct connection. Now here is where if you were doing the manual installation, you would click this, put in the URL, access code, and your KFS credentials. Now we are doing the automatic registration, so we will just paste in that configuration key. Next register KFS devices as KFS devices and we want to manage. Next, this is just a um, review of the settings that you've put in there and complete. This part can also take a little bit of time so I will pause it. Okay and <clears throat> excuse me the gateway is now installed and configured. 
All we have to do is log, <coughs> excuse me, is to log in. The password is admin with a capital A, hashtag one, two, three, four. Log in, and here we go. As you will see, I do have an 1820. It found it and it automatically registered it. This is something that did not work this smoothly with the gateway for Windows. Um, it was Java based and very slow. Uh, it was actually kind of a hit and miss. Uh, sometimes you'd have to run the discovery methods a few times before it would find the machines and register them. And uh, this is just so much quicker. So if once you get it registered, uh, you wanted it to to do the the local, you know, uh, local network, but now you also want to uh, do some subnets. You have the same option here to add devices and you will see the same three um, methods. So now here is where you could do the USB uh, to discover USB connected devices. And then also down at the bottom here, it does not automatically check enable automatic registration. I would recommend doing that. Now USB devices, the gateway is installed on one computer on the network. If they have uh, devices that are hooked up USB, each computer that has a USB device attached to it would need this local agent installed. So you would need to download the local agent, install it on the computer that has the USB device. Then when you come in here, whichever discovery method uh, you choose, uh, you could tell it to discover USB devices as well. But again, that local agent needs to be installed first. Uh, now, if they do have a firewall blocking, it installs, it finds all of the machines, but it fails to register them. Once you get the, the issues resolved um, that's blocking it, all you have to do is put a check mark in there and tell it to register devices. Now, one of the things with the gateway is the gateway will find everything, all, all devices, but you have really three different types of devices that it's finding. Uh, it's finding non-Kyocera devices, it'll find legacy Kyocera devices, and it will also find KFS capable devices. Now, the KFS capable devices started with uh, like the, the uh, 4550 CI, 4500, um, the four digit machines. Uh, if they, they were natively KFS capable. Once the gateway finds them and registers them, they will leave the gateway and report directly on KFS. Uh, all legacy devices, which would be like the um, 4050, 5050, 400 CI, 520i, the older machines that were not KFS capable, they will, you'll still see them in the gateway. So just because it initially finds machines and then uh, once it registers them, they no longer show up in the gateway, they're reporting directly on KFS. And that is about it for here. So now that we're here, if we come in here to testing and practice, we will see our new gateway here. So if we click in here, go to more and discovery settings, we can actually do the discovery settings remotely. So a customer calls us up, said, hey, we, you know, we, we opened up a new office uh, and we you know, wanna add those machines to KFS. Go ahead and click add and once again you will see these same three options for the discovery methods now again i would not remotely through kfs i would not select search for usb since the local agent needs to be installed first however through kfs they've again put the automatic registration up here at the top i would put a check mark in there and i will just cancel out of that 
Uh, one of the other things is, again, under More, you have the associated devices. Here you can come in and look at what devices uh, are in this gateway. And there it is. That is about it. Thank you very much.